so i'll be trusted to try it today's class we learn how to make this beautiful dress it's a cut shirt dress with standard color and it has this beautiful adjuster at the side to adjust it to any side you want and also at the back it has this beautiful flaps that is continuous from the sleeve all the way to the back center back and then back to the sleeve it's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly if this is something you would like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you this shirt now we're going to be starting with the front okay so i have my fabric folded into two so that i can cut the two sides of the front together and because this is a shirt we're going to be having a button allowance here because it's going to be having a button so i have two inches here for my button hook placket and then i just mark the two inches round and then i roll this straight so that is what i've done so far so before i start now because i'm cutting this directly on my fabric i'm going to measure like half an inch on the upper part here which is going to serve as the allowance to show my shoulder together so i have it marked like that so i'm going to start all of my measurements from there so the first measurement i'll be taking are my vertical measurement which is my handhold measurement my my waist and the hip line so the handhold that i'm working with is nine inches but because this is a shirt and the back is going to be longer than the front by around one inch so the actual handful measurement that i'm working with is nine inches i'm going to reduce it by one inch to make it eight inches so i like to do it like that so in case it is too if it's too big small you can increase it's better for it to be small than to be big so i have that as my handful and from there i'm going to measure my waistline the waistline that i'm working with is 16 inches then the hip line that I'm working with is 26 inches and then from there I'm going to measure my full length so the table is small so I hope you can see it so this is my hip line and then the full length I'm working with is 40 inches so I'm going to mark that and make all of that into a straight line so now the next thing is for me to measure my shoulder the shoulder i'm working with is 16 inches divided by two is going to give me eight inches so i have eight inches there and then the neckline that i'm working with is two and a half inches by three inches you can also use three inches by three inches if the person is big okay so i'm using two and three quarter by three inches for the front and then using my curve ruler i'm going to connect that together so this is my neckline for the front and then where my shoulder stops i'm going to go down by one inch for my shoulder slope and then i'm going to connect it to my neck point okay so now the neckline that i have here i'm going to extend it to the button hole placket that i have so now for my handhold on this handhold line i'm going to measure my bust measurement the bust is 40 Two inches 42 inches very by four is going to give me 10 and a half inches and then I'm going to add like quarter of an inch for ease because I don't want it too tight okay so I have that there and then I'm adding one and a half inches for my allowance so now from here I'm going to connect to form my armhole so my camera stopped recording I thought it was recording so I'll just explain what I have done so here I've drawn my handhold curve as we can see. So now the next thing is to move to my waist and to shape the waist. So for the waist, the waist I'm working with is 34 inches. 34 inches divided by 2 is going to give me 8 and a half inches. But because there's going to be a lacing on the side, I don't want the waist to be too tight. Your waist shouldn't be too tight. So it depends on how free you want it to be. So for me, I just added extra 1 inch to this and this made this around i said you can add extra one inch to make it nine and a half or one and a half inches to just make it 10 inches like what i have here depending on what you want and then also i added one and a half inches allowance just like i had it for the bust then i connected them together so now for my hip you can just go over to your hip line and take your hip measurement also and add your hips to it but for me i just wanted to have like an hairline a very small it's not really an hairline it's just going to be free a bit so what i did is my actual hip measurement is 
46 inches so 46 inches by 4 is going to give me 11 and a half inches so i went down to the hemline here and the 11 and a half inches this is my actual hip line measurement which is 11 and a half inches here so i just added one and a half inches extra to it which is this and then i added the one and a half same allowance that i added to the rest so now what i did was to connect from my waistline all the way to the hemline diagonally like this and then i'm going to cut this out i hope you understand that okay so i have cut this side now this is the upper part and this is what the lower part is looking like because it's just bent a bit it's not really like an a line i just want it free down there so now on the shoulder remember we left half an inch for our seam allowance so i'm just going to mark that half an inch upwards here now and then i'm going to cut off the excess that we have there and also cut my neckline okay so we are going to use this this back this front pattern to cut our back pattern by making just few modifications to the back so this is what i have so the first thing i'm going to do now remember there is no placket on the back so i'm going to fold the placket allowance that i have in front i'm just going to fold it over like this and then i'll hold it with a pin you can fold this and then hang on it just make sure it is folded so that it's not going to influence what you want to cut for your for your back so for the back i just folded my fabric into two again and then i placed my front on top of it so that i can cut my back so before folding it make sure that you have extra allowance for the front remember i said the back is going to fold over to meet the front like this so now i'll be extending this by two inches for the back and because there's going to be an allowance like a, sh a shoulder allowance there i had half an inch to make it two and a half inches so now from this point now i'll mark two and a half inches here and also on the other one i'm going to mark two and a half inches so that i can draw my shoulder slope for the back okay so this is the shoulder slope for the back and then i'm just going to link it to the handhold line that i have for the front okay so this is what i have now so for the back neckline here where my shoulder starts the starting point for the front neckline here i'm just going to extend it like this okay and then mark my neck points also from where the neckline stops for the front so you can see me just extending what i have here so that i can just make a curve to form my back neckline also so that's what the back neckline is going to look like now i'm going to cut this out the neckline and then i'm also going to cut out the shoulder slope and also cut the handhold so the only difference for this is also because for the in the length the, the, the there's going to be a difference in the length for this i'm going to extend the length by one inch for the back and the reason i'm doing this is because i want to divide the back on this center area here on this upper part on the chest line area so i just want to divide it a bit because i'm going to be starting a flounce there so if you're going to be placing your flounce just directly on top of your of your dress you don't need to have this allowance but because i'm going to divide it and then i will sew it back it's going to make it jump and it's not going to be equal with what i have in front that's why i'm adding one inch allowance it's going to be half an inch for the upper part and then half an inch on the lower part so that by the time i join it i'm not going to have any shortage by the time we get there you understand what i'm saying better so now i'm just going to use this measurement Th that this is the only modification we are doing i'm going to cut out this now and then i'm going to use this front to trace out exactly what i have for this side and then on the lower part i'm just going to increase it by one inch so i've cut it out now you can see that i have exactly the same thing and then on the hem is just longer by one inch so here for the neckline here so that you can have something that is rhyme i'm just going to fold it remember this is going to fold towards the front like this so i'm going to reshape what i have here on my handful by the time i fold it if it's not correct 
if it does not run to with what I have in front I'm just going to cut off the excess that I have and also on my neckline here you can you can see that it is not accurate so what you can do to that is just measure what you have for your shoulder on the front so here I have five around five and a half inches so what I have here I'm just going to measure it starting from the ham hole area here also so you can see the excess that I have here and then I'm going to redraw my um, my neckline so that I can rhyme with what I have in front remember we are sewing the front and back together so now if I fold this you can see that I have exactly the same thing now so this is what it's going to look like so now I'm going to keep this aside and then work on dividing my back Okay, now on the back, like I said, I'm going to fold the one inch that is going to go towards the front. I'm going to fold this like this. And then from my back shoulder, I'm going to measure around five, depending on where you want to place your flounce. I'm going to measure five to six inches downwards, okay? So I'm measuring six inches, including the seam allowance that I'm going to use to sew it. And then I'm going to make it into a straight line here. So here now, I'm going to cut it to. That's where I'm going to place my flowers. So I've cut this now. So for the rest of this, before you finish straps, and you can just sew it together. You just use the pin to hold it together. That's where this five half an inch allowance come in. Remember, because we've cut it, we are going to sew it together. And when I sew it together, I'll use half an inch to sew the two together, which is one inch. So by the time I sew it now, it's going to rhyme with what I have as my front. And also, this is going to this will affect the hamper for the front. So to redraw your hamper, I'm just going to place this. On, I'm going to place them on the same level on the hem so that I can see the short leg that I have on my hand pull from here and it should be around one inch that we're going to use to sew it and then I'm going to reconnect that by reshaping the hand pull that I have for the back so I'm doing all of this because I want my flounce to be tucked in but if you're going to be placing your flounce directly on your on your bodies you don't need to do all of this just cut your shirt the way you cut it normally so now the next thing is to mark out my dart okay so i've gone ahead to join them together now and then i join it by the half an inch and this is what the back looks like now so the next thing is for me to mark out my dart and for the dart i'm going to be marking it on the right side because of the loops that we're going to be creating on the dart line and i want us to see it so i'm going to be marking it with my marker or well, if you're doing it on your own you can just use something that's not going to be so feasible but i want everybody to see it, so i'm going to be using the marker to make it really feasible so to do this now i'm folding my fabric on the right side now and then i'm going to redraw my that line my waistline sorry remember it was marked on the wrong side so i'm going to use that to mark out my that it's just the same way we mark out our that so i don't want this to be too long i already created the that so just like we create our normal that this is for the front i folded in the allowance then i use my bust span that's the nipple to nipple measurement mine is nine inches so I divided by, by two and that gave me four and a half inches. So this is on the right side, like I said. So I tried to locate the the waistline. So this guided me. This is my hand pull. Remember the hand pull was eight inches. So it helped me to locate my 16 inches for my waistline. And then on that waistline, I just marked it there. And then the front that starts around the nipple point area. And for me is 11 inches so from my 16 inches which is my waistline i mark the 11 inches which is this and then the back the the lower that stops two inches below the two inches before the hip line so that's 24 inches for me so i marked out those points and then on the waistline i went by half an inch on both sides and then connected it to my dart legs so i created the dart for this side of the front and then i also did the same thing for the other side of the front also so now to create my loops 
So the reason why we marked the dots on the right side, remember this is the wrong side that we did our marking. The reason why I marked the dots on the like side, right side is because of the look that we're going to add to it. So I'm mixing this patterned fabric with it to form the loops and the flans area. So from the fabric now, I've cut out a straight fabric and then I sew it in form of a bias just to create my loop. So now to create where I want the loop to be on my dart line, that's the center one here, not the upper niche, upper niche. On the center one, I've gone ahead to mark out one one inch interval. That's where, I'm, so it depends on what you want. You can make it half an inch, you can make it, you can make it one and a half inches. So it's totally up to you. So I'm trying to get my waistline, which is the 16 inches. So from my waistline, I went upwards by one inch and then from there i went one one inches downwards again also so that i can have four loops so you can have four loops you can have five loops it's totally up to you so for the loop now i'm going to cut out three inches so you can see i'm measuring three inches and then i'm going to cut it out this is three inches and because i'm having four loops i'm going to cut out three or four of that so this is the second one the third one and the last one so after cutting out your loops so now i'm going to place it like this on the center line so i'm going to place one like this and then i'll place the other one like this and then i'm going to sew so that's the first one then you go ahead now pick another one go to where you have your second line you can have like half an inch interval between them and then you place it like that so you place your four loops like that and then you sew it on the center line so i'll go back to the machine and do that now okay so i'm gonna head to sew the loops and you can see i have one two three four and like i said you can have more than four and this sewing is done on my center line so if it is poking out to the other that leg now you may want to trim it down a bit so that everything will be concealed by the time you sew in your dart so this is just me trimming off the excess that may be poking out there so this is what the loop is looking like now this is what my loops look like so the next thing now is to sew hold in my dart normally just like you hold it so what you just do is to fold this over now remember the loop is now in between our two dart legs so you just fold them on top of each other now and then on the wrong side of your fabric you hold your dart like you normally do okay so i'm gonna head to all the dots now you can see this is the wrong side and then i've sewn in my dot and then this is my loop now tucked in between the two that you can see that it is neatly finished now so this is the other one you're going to do the same thing for this is the back so i'm going to repeat it for the two dots for the back and also you're going to do the same thing for the two dots for the front also so i'll go ahead now and do that and then i'll bring it back for us to continue I've successfully tucked in all of the loops in the dark so this is for the front okay and this is for the back so the four that are complete so i'm going to set the back aside now and work on the front so remember we have a button placket to create for the front so the front is still together so the first thing i'm going to do is to fold it into two and then use my scissors to cut it into two pieces so that i can have them separately and then create my button placket so now I have it folded into two, arrange it well, and then you cut it at the center front. So after cutting it, we have it separately like this. So the next thing now is to create our placket. So to create this placket, you can just fold it inwards like this. So I notched where I have my, you can see my notch. I placed the notch where my placket allowance starts. So now you can just fold it inwards to the wrong side like this and then fold it a bit so that it matches with where you have your placket allowance and sew it down. But because the fabric I'm using has the same pattern on the front and back, you can't really tell the difference between them. I like to fold it towards the front because I like the pattern that it gives me. So because it's like that, I can still get away with it. So instead of folding it to the back, I'm just folding mine to the front like this. And then once I fold it to the front, I'm going to fold it like tiny a bit. Okay, so you just fold it tiny here and then fold it again to match up with what you have here. So you just fold all of that now and then pin it to the to the hem 
and then I'm going to sew it on both sides. So I'll do that and bring it back to show us what it looks like. Okay, so I've gone ahead to sew it on both sides. I can see how fine my button placket is looking now. So I have it on the two sides and by the time you hold it, it's going to be like this. So if uh, what you're working with is not so strong, you may need to add interfacing to this before you fold it just to straighten because of the button hole that we're going to be making there so i'm just going to hold this with a pin now so that it's going to stay in place for me and then i'm going to bring in my back and lay it on the front so that i can sew it together on the shoulder and also on the side then we'll move straight to the sleeve so now i'm going to place it on top of each other now and go ahead and sew it on the shoulder and then also join it by the one and half inches allowance i left on the side i'll do this and bring it back to show us what we have so i've gone ahead to sew it on the shoulder as you have seen and then also on the side so if you take note of all the necessary allowances the side have to match and once it matches and you arrange it you will see that the back will drop down to meet the front by the one inch allowance that we had it okay so you can see that the hem is exactly on the same level so now and i saw it by the one and a half inches allowance that i left so you just take note of all those important points and by the time we turn it out this is what the shirt is looking like now so now we're almost through the next thing is to create our sleeve so now to create this sleeve for the sleeve, I have my basic sleeve drafted like this. This is the front and this is the back. So I've cut out the back now. I'm just going to separate the front from the back. It's a long sleeve and I already have a detailed tutorial on how you can draft your basic sleeve on the channel if you don't know how to. So this is the front and this is the back. So it's important that you label this front and back. So remember when we were drafting the back, I said I'm going to be inserting a flounce okay so for the flounce i separated it i went down by around six and a half inches and then i cut it off at the back so i'm going to do the same thing for the sleeve also i'm doing this because i don't want my sleeve, my flounce to be opened i want to tuck it in between the seams that i have there so now you're going to arrange your pattern very well on the handhold area remember this is the back so you see the front the back extending to the front here so this is what my handhold is looking like now and this is the back where i have the yoke so this is my front and this is my back so now you can hide i can do it in two ways from your shoulder which is here you can use your tape to measure where this seam stops so from here now i have around four inches i remember i used half an inch to sew it inwards so that's four and a half inches so you are going to cut four inches here because when we're drafting when you are transferring it to our fabric i'm just going to add a half an inch allowance but i don't want us to forget so is that you measure it here and then indicate it from the shoulder of your back or you just take your sleeve now and then use it to match it up so when you get to that point where you have your yoke the yoke that we have at the back you just notice so it is at that point now i'm just going to reconfirm it here and okay the four inches is here so remember the paper cannot bend like your tape is going to bend so you, you want to follow what you have on your tape to be sure so i have the four inches there so that i can have something straight i'm just going to bend it okay so like i was saying it's on the back part remember the flans is going through the back i'm just going to fold it now to the hem to have something straight like I have like this okay. so after folding it you can see what I have here I'm going to separate it and then cut it separately so this is going to be one side and this is going to be the other side for my sleeve so when you are cutting it on your main fabric you may want to add the allowance the half an inch allowance you are going to use to sew it back to it so i have this like this for the front and this one for the back so i'll go over to the tube now cut it on my fabric then bring it back okay so i'm gonna head to cut it now you can see the allowance that i left here okay so now the next thing is to sew this to our bodies so you can just sew it together and sew it but for me i'm just going to open up a bit of my yoke 
and then I'm going to sew it separately so I'm going to sew this side to the shorter part and then this long part I'm going to sew it from the yoke at the back all through to the front so I'll do that now and then I'm going to join it on the Honda ham and then I'll bring it back to show us okay so this is the Honda ham sorry so I'll, I'll do that I'm going to join it together on the Honda ham by placing this side to this side so I'm going to shape it so the only opening I'm going to have is the opening that I created along my yoke area so that I can make sure it cut out my plants okay so now I've gone ahead to sew the sleeve to it and you can see this is the opening I've sewn it on the Honda arm you can see that it is closed on the Honda arm now so this is the opening that we have at the back it's from the yoke and then it continues you can see how open it is so now for your flounce you just need to take your measurement from this place now all the way to the hand hole to the back and then to the other sleeve so the measurement that you have there is what you're going to use to cut your flounce you can either cut your flounce in front of a straight for in a straight form and then you gather it or you have cut it in flare or spiral flounce whichever one is fine depending on the amount of fabric you have so I'll cut my flans now and then I'll bring it back to show us how we're going to attach it. So I'm gonna have to mark out my my flans now. I hope you can see this. It's a spiral flans. I have a detailed tutorial on how you can draft this. If you don't know how to, and the length of the length of the flans is five inches, including same allowance. So um, I place the right side against the wrong side because you can see that there is a clear difference between the right and wrong side and it's going to show. So I decided to line it. That's why I'm cutting two of each to turn out each other. So I'm going to cut it out now and take it to the sewing machine and then I'm going to line it. I'm going to sew it together to turn it out so that I can show us how we're going to fix this to the bodies okay so i've gone ahead to turn it and this is what it looks like after ironing it you can see i have the same thing on both sides now so the next thing is to insert it into our yoke so to do this i'm going to rip the seam that i have and remember i just using a bit of the back seam to insert my sleeve so i'm going to loosen it completely and then i'm going to sew in the flounce so the seam is ripped now you can see that it's opened up completely so I'm going to insert my my flounce in between these seams. So it's going to start from the sleeve. I've already hemmed the sleeve on the hem line here. So I'm just going to put it like this and sew it first. And then I'm going to find a way to turn it to the other side and sew it. So if you're not able to sew it, you can just loosen in the under half so that I can have access to sew it completely. And then you close it by the time you are done. So when we are done, the Plus, it's just going to look like something like this. Okay, by the time we finish inserting it, so this is simple for the back. I just need to pull it a bit like this and then suspend my plants in between the two fabrics and then sew it. So I'll go back to the sewing machine now and do this and then I'll bring it back to show us what we have. So I've gone ahead to sew it now and you can see that the sleeve is in between the yoke and the lower bodies and it just goes all the way to the sleeve as you can see and this one looks like on the half side you can see that it is neat on both sides so now the dress is almost complete the next thing is for me to measure around the neckline to draft my collar and i already have a tutorial on how you can do a shirt, standard shirt collar on the channel if you don't know how to you can check that out then fix my collar and after fixing my collar you make your button hole fix your button and then you hem it on the lower part and your shirt is ready so now for these loops now i've gone ahead to create my rope so you just need to fix your rope in between the loops for the front and the back okay so you arrange it well and then you fix the rope for the two side and that's what you're going to use to adjust it anyhow you want okay so this is for this side and this is going to be for the other side so on the hemline you can decide to leave it straight like this or you can just shape it on the hem which i think i'll still be doing so to do this now just going to fold this back into four that we started with okay 
So after folding it into four on the side, I'm going to measure like three inches upward and then I'm going to connect it to the center. So this is the side seam and this is the center seam. So this is actually optional. So after arranging it on this side, I'm just going to go up by two or three inches. I'm going up by two and a half inches. And using my curve ruler, I'm going to connect it to this side. Okay, so like I said, it's not compulsory, it's just what I want to do. So after connecting it like that, I'm going to trim it off. So this is just going to shape it a bit on the hemline. So this is what the hem is looking like now. You can see it's no longer straight, it's a bit bent. So I'll go over to the sewing machine now and fix my collar and then hem it. And then I'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it just looks like now. The collar is fixed and I just need to fix my button and my button hole on the placket. So on the side now, we can see that I have already fixed a rope in the loops that we created. And what this loop is going to do is to gather all the excess fabric that I have here. Even if the dress is big, it's just going to adjust it to whatever size that you're working with. All you just need is to drag this rope as much as you want and it's going to be fitted. You can see that we use a big size for drafting this and this mannequin is actually a small size and it's fitted on the mannequin. So the rope is attached to the two sides and now if we turn to the back, we will see the flounce that we created. So the flounce is continuous from the sleeve all the way to the back and then to the other sleeve and you can see how fitted it is on the back also because of the adjuster that we have there so now when we're drafting we open this up here by six inches because we want to tuck in this flange here so if you don't do that it means your rough edges is likely to be showing uh, the same allowance i used in sewing i don't want that especially because of the sleeve remember the sleeve is going to be showing showing both ways so it's better to just insert it in what's like we have it here so i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed this let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye